Today we're talking about the EG4 Charge Verter GC. Why? Because running a battery-based solar system means you'll eventually need a reliable generator backup to top off your bank. We bought ours from Signature Solar. With Black Friday deals upon us, now is the best time to get into solar. Our affiliate link to the Charge Verter GC is in the show notes below. We greatly appreciate the support to our channel. So let's get into the Charge Verter GC. This unit is designed for total flexibility. It works with practically any wall outlet or generator, whether it's an inverter style or conventional, 120 volt, 240 volt, large or small. Charge Verta doesn't care what you feed it. It takes dirty power, cleans it up completely, and delivers a stable, pure DC charge to your batteries. Your only job is to check your power source's limit and set the Charge Verter's input current safely below it. With 18 EG4 batteries total, and a generator sized to run the whole house, we went big. That's why we have three charge verter GCs. I'll be walking through the setup and operation of one and three units. This is our existing setup. We have a Solark 15K with 12 EG4 batteries, all hooked up to common bus bars, which then go to a fuse and then into the solar arc. The charge verter comes with most of what you'll need, but if your generator uses a different outlet, no problem. The plug connector is interchangeable. You don't need an expensive adapter, just swap to the one you need. I'll show you that easy process later in the video. All right, let's talk configuration and power settings. Setup is simple, only a few settings to worry about. It all comes down to your power source's capability. You'll set the input current based on what your breaker or generator can safely handle. For example, a standard 120 volt, 20 amp short power circuit usually gets you about 24 amps of output. A 30 amp breaker jumps you up to 45 amps. And on a 240 volt, 30 amp circuit, you can pull the charge verter's full 100 amp output. If you trip a breaker, just back down the current slightly. As for the voltage, you should always match the recommendations for your specific batteries. Before we jump into the setup, let's address RS-485 communication. For our final integrated setup, we won't be using it. The reason is a technical conflict. The Charge Verter GC is designed to be the master device, but all inverters and solar assistant is already serving that role, and they simply can't share that line. However, the RS-485 connection does make sense for charging a single, standalone battery, and we'll be demonstrating that capability in this video. A quick note about the upcoming Charge Verter Plus. An EG4 rep at the 2025 RE Plus conference mentioned that they spend a lot more time in the firmware trying to make sure that at launch it would have more quality of life features. My hope is that this includes more flexibility in how it communicates, but We'll have to wait and see what they actually release. A final crucial warning before we get into the hands-on setup, always double check your wiring, breakers, and current settings before powering anything up. Small mistakes in a high-powered DC system can be very expensive. With that said, let's get hands-on and set up the first unit. Here's what you get with a charge verter. You get the manual. The battery cables, the power cord, and three other cables. That's your firmware update cable, two wire generator start, and communications cable for RS-485. And lastly, comes with the wall mounting bracket. Since we have now 18 EG4 LL batteries, we knew that we needed a decent sized generator to not only charge the batteries, but to also power our house in the event that we needed it. So we went with a 20 kilowatt quote unquote portable generator, and it comes with two 240 volt 30 amp plugs and two 240 volt 50 amp plugs. I've got three charge verters. This is the standard outlet that it comes with. The 
but we need to adapt to this one. To do that, we're going to remove these two screws, then remove these two screws. Once they're removed, this can slide out and we can unscrew each of these three wires. Once unscrewed, that slides off, and this can slide off, and then we can install the plug we need. Word of caution, make sure you get a NEMA rated plug, otherwise if you buy a cheap one, these have the tendency to melt and start a fire. Don't do that. Now we've got our 14-50 plug installed. Just for note, anybody that's using 240 volt, the neutral wire is not used, just L1, 2, and ground. Once you have everything hooked up, it's time to configure the unit. Start by powering it on. I'm going to do that with my breaker. You'll see the LCD turn on. And it will show you some information. So currently, I do not have this hooked up to the RS-485. To get communications working between an EG4 battery and a charge verter, you have to make sure that you set your dip switches to an ID of 1. That would be, at least on the, the LLSs, your first, uh, first dip switch is down and everybody else is up. So on number 1, 1 goes down that way. You turn on your battery, it immediately detects it. Now it's time to configure it to the battery parameters. So we're going to hit enter, and you can see it's highlighted on voltage. So we're going to hit enter again. The down arrow key lets you switch to which number you want to change. I want it at 56.2, so I'm going to hover over that and then hit this twice, going over, and that's the voltage in the manual for what we want this to be charged, the, the EG4 LLSs to be charged to is 56.2. After setting the voltage, because we're plugged into shore power, quote unquote, the only two uh, values that matter are voltage and current. If you needed to change things, which we do, we're going to set our current to only be, let's say, 40 amps. When you're using shore power, these parameters are not used. It is just voltage and current. Next up, we can power on or flip the uh, breaker for the battery. And then let's escape out to that and we can power on the charger. And you can see we are putting 40 amps in. And it also shows 40. So we are now charging the battery. Nothing to do but wait. All right, we are almost there, 99%. 55.8 volts, not far now. Looks 
like it's starting to ramp down because it is almost at 100%. As you can see, the state of charge shows 100%, but you can't always trust what the BMS says. If you don't get to 100% frequently enough, let's say you go for a period of five, six days of not being fully charged, the state of charge will jump off. Once it actually gets to 56.2, it will reset the state of charge to 100% so that throughout the day or whatever, it will be closer to accurate. When the charge verter gets to its set bolt, uh, charging point, it goes into an absorption, meaning it's going to ramp down even more, down to zero. Once charging is complete, it turns off and uh, the voltage starts to just go back to its resting. And then your battery is done. Interesting thing, I left this sitting for just a couple minutes and it started to charge again. So. I flipped this the uh, breaker and that finished that. And that is charging from shore power. Next we'll go over charging multiple batteries with multiple charge herders on a generator. Now we have all three batteries hooked up to the three charge verters and all hooked up to the generator each of their respective plugs. So the plan here obviously is we're going to be using these three to charge 18 batteries, not one individually. What we really need to do here is get these guys up to 100% so that we can integrate them with our existing pack. Then I'll do another video on how I've actually hooked up all three of these guys to all 18 batteries. But for now, as you can see, we have communications going with all three batteries. They are ready to roll. So, we'll start the generator. Stupid mice. <laughs> Welcome to the farm. All three batteries are now at 100% and good to go. So I'm going to stack them and bring them up to the garage where they will finally be installed. Stay tuned as we install three Sinclair Skyrack 2.0 season adjustable ground mounts that will hold 42 bifacial panels. But for now, I hope we've answered any questions you might have about the Charge Verter GC. Don't forget our affiliate link to Signature Solar is in the show notes below. Stay tuned for more of our dome build and solar install. Thanks for watching and see you on our next video. If you enjoy our videos, we'd really appreciate it if you would take a second and subscribe to our channel. Thanks. And until next time, like our farm sign says, just keep growing. <laughs>